What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian and you're watching Flight Garage and today I'm going to give you a big overview on how to replace the carrier bearing on your Mazda V2000 or V2200. If you're, if you're one of those unfortunate people that have a two-piece uh, drive shaft and you have a carrier bearing in the middle of it, uh, you might also have to do this at some point. Uh, I know I came to my V2200 here and I had to do it because it was completely torn up. It was super messed up and it was just causing problems as I was trying to drive the truck. So it desperately needed to be replaced. Now, since I started uh, taking the drive shaft off and I started doing all of this, initially I wanted to do a full tutorial, kind of like how I always do for you guys. But being the first time that I've done this and I had never done it before, I ended up having to just kind of focus and try to get this done the right way as best as I could. Um, and I, in that process, I kind of stopped recording just because it was a matter of time and whatnot. So then now that I have it kind of all put together, I decided to just kind of give you a big overview, try to give you tips and, and on how to get this done. Um, and first and foremost, I want to say that if you have a press or you have access to a press, that's absolutely going to be the best way to go about it. But if you do not, like I do, if you don't have access to a press, if you don't have anyone that has a press that can help you with this, then you might have to do it the hard way, which is the way we're doing it today. I am going to tell you pretty much what I did, how I did it type of thing, show you the tools that you probably need so that way you are ready and prepared to tackle this on, and then show you the drive shaft right now. It actually is still not in the truck. I have it outside because I wanted to get this done for you guys. So hopefully this is gonna be helpful for you if you end up having to do this. It's not gonna be a step-by-step -step like my usual videos, but I should give you a pretty big idea on how to get this done hopefully uh, in the least painful way. All right guys, and as you can see here, we have my dry shaft outside of the truck. And if we get closer here, we have the brand new carrier bearing, and then we have a brand new U-joint in place. Uh, the U-joint, as I was taking this out, turns out it was very bad, very rusty, and it was actually, I guess it didn't have enough grease or something inside of there, so it was an update that needed to happen as well. Um, so I made sure I did these two things since I was taking it off at the same time. Now. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and try to do the ones for the front or the rear. Mine don't look too bad. I did buy those parts, but uh, after taking a closer look, I think it is going to be a little bit harder to do here uh, without a press. And part of the reason why the middle one is a lot easier to do than the end ones is going to be because the end ones don't seem to have a clip, at least not on my drive shaft that I noticed. There's no holding clip um, that basically once you take that out, uh, from here, you're able to just kind of push the U-joint out to one side, get the cap off, push it to the other side, get the cap off type of thing. Um, and that makes this replacing at least a lot easier versus this that seems to be kind of pressed in on the edges there. And it is going to take a lot more force to get those U-joints out of there since you kind of have to fight the metal uh, that's holding it in place. Um, so one thing to keep in mind, you probably should do all of them if I'm being honest at the same time, since you're already taking it out, um, but that'll be up to you. I'm just gonna focus on this part for this video. I'm gonna try to tell you all the tools that I ended up using that hopefully will help you get this done. And we'll start off with the parts that you will need. So the carrier bearing is gonna be part 8551, and then the U-joint that is next to the carrier bearing is gonna be part 1-1610. Uh, that is the part number that you will need. And those are gonna replace those ones that I just showed you. So since we are starting here, we're gonna start from the left. If you live in the South like me, you might wanna have some off or some mosquito repellent bug uh, spray. So that's just a quick tip on that. But you will need some brake cleaner, some PB blaster, uh, some kind of grease gun or, a gr or just grease in general uh, for this, just cause you wanna put some grease on those joints and everything once you start installing them. Um, if you have, you have some paper towels, some safety glasses, very important guys, you need to get a paint marker. You really should get one. You need to mark up everything direction wise, how things is lined up on your drive shaft before you take it off and during the process potentially. Uh, some of the sockets that you will need is gonna be a 14 millimeter for the bolts holding the drive shaft into the axle and yeah, I believe into the axle, you will need a 17 millimeter for the bolts holding the carrier bearing into the chassis. Uh, I also use a 18 millimeter socket to push the U-joints that are by the carrier bearing. That was basically a perfect fit. 
uh, I have a 26 millimeter. Uh, this is for the bolt that holds the yoke, I think that's called. Uh, basically, the, the piece that is next to the carry bearing, there's a big bolt in there. You will need this 26 millimeter uh, socket. Uh, you will need a 22 millimeter socket to move the ball joint press, which we'll talk about in a second. And then I also have a one inch here that I use more as a uh, base when I was putting my U joints back into place. Uh, if you have some power tools, then I recommend you get some uh, and, and use them. And we have just a, a impact driver here, well, two impact drivers. Uh, one's just a little bit higher than, than the other one, but not necessary. If you have them, great, but you don't absolutely need them. You will mainly need a breaker bar if you don't have access to power tools. Uh, so get yourself a breaker bar. You might need a file as well, a ratchet, an extension. Uh, two flat heads at least maybe uh, if you had a longer one or a smaller one uh, a knife a rubber mallet a hammer I have a, two, a 32 ounce hammer if you have something that's heavier it's gonna make it easier to get those dew joints out uh, but the 32 ounce seem to work very well for me uh, so like I said if you do have something heavier it'll just make it easier to get them out some of the tools that you will need to rent from somewhere like AutoZone is gonna be a ball joint press and also a two three puller now this one the five ton that i got seemed to be a little bit small on this part um, so if you could get a slightly bigger one that would be better maybe the seven ton uh, might be bigger than this so it might be easier to use uh, just because this ended up being just a little bit short when i was taking uh, some of those metal pieces off uh, the reason why we got the ball joint press too is initially we we're going to push the U joint, kind of like what Chris Fix did on his video with uh, with the press, but it didn't work out so well for us. So what we ended up just using basically was the middle uh, kind of adapters. We're going to use the little one to push some of those ball joints out. I'm sorry, not ball joint, uh, the U joint, and then the middle one and this piece to press in our new carry bearing that is gonna be the best and safest ways to push it in because that middle adapter fits perfectly around the uh, carry bearing. So these are all the tools that you will need. You might need some more uh, depending if you have to lift your truck, obviously some jack stands, a jack and whatnot, but these were the main tools that I use uh, for this to get this done today. Now, if we go back here to my drive shaft, uh, you can see here that I have everything marked up. And this is what you wanna do. You wanna mark exactly how everything is lined up. Before you even remove the drive shaft, you definitely wanna mark uh, position and everything of the bolts. Uh, you might, it might be hard to see here, but I have markings along this and markings in the axle to make sure I know where it lines up. And as you can see here, I have more markings where everything lines up. Um, be careful with this, make sure it doesn't get too dirty. Try to keep it clean as best as possible. I put all my bolts in a little Ziploc bag to make sure I didn't lose them. And then if we come back to here, I'm gonna show you some, some quick tricks on how to get this out of it. So if we're back here again with the U-joint, basically you'll use this small kind of adapter to put on the bottom, place your drive shaft over this where it kind of lines up with this so you're not holding the U joint in place. Basically lined all that with that. This side kind of lines up with this side. And then you're gonna come in with your 18 millimeter socket, put it in place, and then start hitting it with your hammer um, to get it out. Uh, once I got both sides off, I was able to take the U joint out of there. The U joint was definitely very bad. Uh, you can see here how, hopefully you can see, you can see there how rusted it was. Uh, it has grooves into it. It was a very bad joint at this point. So it definitely needed to be replaced. Now I came over here and here what I'm doing is I basically cut off the remainder of that carrier bearing, put it to the side, cut off as much as I could out of this just to reveal the metal piece here. Uh, it might be kind of hard to see from this angle. Let me go on the other side. So remove all of that so we can grab this metal edge out of here which is what we're going to pull to get this carrier bearing off of there now before we got to that point i honestly we did have to take this out and the way i did it is with this puller i basically made it into two instead of having the three put it on the sides and be very careful because you don't want to mess any of the inside of this 
put it in the center and then twisted it until I was able to pull it off. Now this was a little bit short uh, on the bolt side for me. So I did have to come in just at the very end and just kind of hit it with my flathead screwdriver. Uh, not inside here, just on the edges on the outside slowly and I was able to take it out. So now it's fully out, which is great. So now we are moving into removing the carrier bearing, like I said, so we have the three of them there and then we're just gonna start pulling it and hopefully it'll come out here pretty soon and then we'll be able to put our new one in place. Okay guys, check it out now. We have finally removed the carrier bearing and the best way to go is to use the three puller. Again, like I said, after we cut all of this, you're gonna clean this little edge a little bit and that's where you're gonna hook your sides into. And after that, I got it tight enough to make sure it wasn't moving, it wasn't getting out of the out of that little metal side and then I just hit it with the impact slowly but control just kind of control little hits and eventually it just came out and then we have it here so this side at least is ready for the new one which is awesome so I'm gonna clean up that a little bit maybe a little bit more uh, grease I do have some grease here so I'll probably add some new grease in there put the new one in place and then perhaps start putting our new u-joint uh, in place as well then you'll come in put the new one in place make sure you know the direction of how this is. Uh, come in, put it in, use your metal adapter with this, and it'll be definitely better if you have someone to help you. Uh, and basically put it like this and hit it with your mallet. It doesn't take a lot of force to get it in there, so hit it with the mallet, with the rubber mallet, and you should be good. And push it as far as it needs to go in here. Uh, once that is done, then basically you reverse the method, you start putting your piece back in place, your uh, bolt in there, tying it and start putting your U-joints in place. Um, there's some great videos out there on how to get your U-joints. Uh, make sure you're not uh, misaligning any of the pins inside. There's like small little needles, uh, I think, believe they call them. So make sure all those needles are nice when you put your cap in there. You don't want to bend any of them because then you will have to get a new U-joint to put in there. So. That's how it is for right now. That's the best way I can explain this. Uh, I know it's unfortunate. I don't have a full on how to do it for you guys, but this, this that I'm telling you right now should help you get this done, hopefully easier and without that much pain. So you will have to get some help from someone to put it back in the truck or to take it down evenly. I had Brian come in and help me and he's gonna help me here in a second, probably just put it back in there. But for the most part, everything else, you could do it on your own if you wanted to. So once again, guys, that is the way I did it on my truck. Again, I'm not gonna claim that that is the best way to do it. The best way for sure will be to have a shop potentially do it for you or have a um, press that you can just press some of the stuff out a lot easier compared to doing it more manually like I am. But it did work for me. We are now ready to put the drive shaft in place. So we'll probably do that and then start driving around, making sure everything is good. And then once it is, come back to you guys and tell you, give you the thumbs up that it's all good to go. So let's do that. All right, guys, I have now finally installed the drive shaft back into the truck. I was a little concerned because it did feel like I might have tightened it a little too much. So uh, again, make sure everything is lined up the exact way it came out. Make sure you line it all up in there. Otherwise you might start getting some vibrations. Also make sure you don't over tighten anything on there. Uh, after I went around on the truck and drove around the block, it seems to do it pretty well. It seems to be definitely don't have that clunking anymore because that drive shaft is now hitting everything in there. Uh, it is held in place. It feels more solid, which is awesome. Driving it feels a little bit better than it was before, so that's awesome too. But for right now, honestly, it is a big improvement. Uh, it was definitely needed to do that carrier bearing as well as those U-joints. So hopefully this overview will help you once you start doing it. It's a, it, it was unfortunate I wasn't able to film it as well as I wanted to but I really hope it helps you if you have some questions on it. Uh, I know it's a scary process, especially without having a press. So definitely if you can find someone that has a press or a buddy, or maybe you pay a shop to take them out for you, uh, that's one way to do it. But if you do want to save the money, it is definitely possible to do this job without having any fancy tools outside of just renting maybe a couple of them from AutoZone and then just getting your money back once you're done with them. Uh, so 
Thanks again so much, guys, for watching. Hopefully, you're liking all the content that we're putting out. Hopefully, this is helpful to you if you're thinking about doing the carrier bearing. Uh, and like always, don't forget to leave a like or hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up with what we're doing. And hopefully, we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.